What's going on, guys? Hope y'all been having an awesome uh, week. No, just started is Monday. This has been since the 4th of July since I last made one. It's a good holiday week. Hopefully y'all are safe out there. Kept most of your fingers. This is no noise research and analysis. Thinking of just going no noise RNA, a little shorter. Has a better ring, probably. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. This is Z Rex, your host. And let's just go ahead and get right into it. I changed some of the formatting, took some notes from uh, some stuff that people have told me. And some feedback I got. So let's go round two, see what happens. All right, that's my page here. Y'all can check it out. Watch out now. One subscriber. Back, back. Give me 50 feet. All right. So, some interesting uh, news here. We'll just go with that. We'll start with this guy. Thought this was pretty cool. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I just totally messed that up. All right, I had to pull up that. Sorry about that. Here we go. This is interesting. Speed Trader jumps into crypto bets as posed by watchdogs. So Flow Traders, these guys are huge in Europe. Uh, you can go down in here and see this. They are the largest trader of exchange traded funds and they're moving into crypto despite regulatory bodies saying they probably shouldn't do that. Money talks guys, money talks. Don't forget regulators are also laggards like most of our indicators that we use. In fact, all of them. So they're always going to be behind the curve. So if we keep going here, we got five of the big U.S. speed traders are already in the markets. Actually, since 2014, guys, they've been in the game. So don't let this news in the last year or so be like, oh, they just now are getting in. Institutional money's just now saying what's up. That's malarkey, guys. I believe we can see some of those big firms if you wanted to look at them for the U.S., I looked it up for you. You can write it down. Jump Trading, LLC, Tower Research Capital, Hudson River Trading are in it now as of this article, which was uh, late last year, November. And uh, we also have, man, I'm going to butcher this one, Susquehanna International Group and DRW Holdings. They've been in it since 2014, guys. High-speed firms, too. It's happening. This isn't new. Oh, the media would like to tell you that it is. Moving on. If we go down here, we can see that you're probably wondering how big these dudes are. They're the largest in the European region. The Dutch firm, they're based out of Amsterdam, traded 244 billion euros, which is about... 284 billion US dollars of ETFs already this first quarter. So you can see that they ain't playing around. We also can see from some research I did on these guys uh, that they, in, I believe it was 2017, no, 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 sorry, 2016. Sorry, I had this highlighted earlier and I lost my place been trying to do that. that's one of the things i'm adding on here so here you go this was highlighted you can see that um that's actually not it man i am really messing up this one guys sorry but it was about 720 billion with a b that is correct dollars 
in ETFs traded. Oh my gosh, here it is. It's like right in the beginning. Jesus. Wasting time on that one. So there you go. 110 traders only. 719 billion. Just in ETFs. That doesn't even include futures, commodities, bonds, stocks, foreign exchange, which is uh, currencies, euro, pound, the loony. So that's pretty interesting, guys. I thought that was worthy. These guys uh, are continuing to pile in, even in the face of regulators, because again, money talks, boys and girls out there. This is also an interesting one. YouTube had it as a defendant in a class action lawsuit. Guys, these class action lawsuits are really stupid. You see them all the time in the traditional markets. Usually they're with penny stocks. It's just a lot of gold miners get hit with these. I don't know, man. You know, in BitConnect, you're crying to someone like this dude lost 770000 It was a Ponzi scheme. Dude, they had a pyramid on the website. Like, why the hell didn't you cash out at least your principal? And then, like, whatever. Risk management, guys, always, foremost, you should practice. This is interesting. This guy, David Silver, I don't really like him that much, especially after I read this. He says, the case is not about YouTube being the speaker or publisher of the content on its website. Instead, liability is predicated on YouTube's failure to act after learning from content directly published on YouTube of the readily foreseeable harm posed by its advertising partners. As the old saying goes, sometimes when you lie down with dogs, you get fleas. Furthermore, he says, YouTube failed as a gatekeeper to protect its users from and warned its users of the very harm YouTube set out to prevent with its advertising protocols and proprietary algorithms. So it's like this guy saying like, oh, this guy lost all this money, $770,000. It's YouTube's fault. I know this is a classic kind of lawyer move to bring in somebody bigger like this. It's pretty silly. Guys, don't even care about these is really the point I even brought this up. These lawyers are wanting money. They don't get money unless they get cases. They're trying to drum them up. It's easy. This is going to keep happening. Class action lawsuits are silly 99% of the time. This guy also, just a little backstory, Silver uh, Miller's firm. This guy, David Silver, he's on tone show tone vase sometimes a lot more recently i've been noticing and he busted the guy for uh cripsy or started that lawsuit but i mean you know here we go this is all just money grabs even by lawyers we can see he was found guilty last summer of stealing eleven thousand bitcoins worth around 105 million but still only was ordered to pay 8.2 million Cost of the crime, guys, just like banks, LIBOR, mortgages, student loans, you name it. Just cost of doing business, man. Sad but true. So who cares about those dudes? Moving on to some charts and tickers. Here's Binance. I like uh, looking at Binance for the top movers. You know, they got most of the volume anyway. Let's see what they got today. Looks like, uh, oh, I can't see it. Zoom things. Trying to tell me I need to see something. It looks like about 816,000 Bitcoin volume. It's pretty good. Give me one second here. All right, mainframe. I am not too familiar with that one. I guess we can go take a look at it real quick. I don't want to do that. Let's check out the chart. That is why we're here after all. Only on Binance, it looks like. Okay, just came out. Um, yeah, so I don't have any comment on that. We got to let that keep going. I guess it is my comment. But moving on, Ethereum. EOS. EOS is looking uh, rather, mm, excuse me looking rather well until 
today. That's okay, guys. I like EOS. EOS, EOS. I've heard it all different ways. I even heard the PR guy say it needs to be EOS.io. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. That's not going to work. can't remember that guy's name. He did a, a show here in Austin a few months ago, a capital factory, and did a lot of Q&A. It was pretty interesting. I actually asked him uh, what he did with the money or what they're doing with the money, and they have so much money, and they, he was complaining about developers and how how they couldn't find the talent and – I was like, well, don't you have the money to pay for developers? And he kind of goes on to say something along the lines of, well, hey, I can't stop all these people from just giving me the money. Yeah, he's kind of right. But it's all good. EOS, the technology, BitShare, Steemit, people hate on them. They're still around. They do well. I mean, Steemit actually is allowing users to get direct monetization of their content. I mean, that's a pretty beautiful thing. Uh, people close to me will know that I do like Steam it and BitShares. And Dan Larimer, I think, will go down as pretty famous coder for blockchain technologies across the board. Yeah, BitShares is awesome too. It's, uh, the, I would say, one of the only real decentralized exchanges pretty awesome check it out if you haven't looked at it eos let's go back to some um other ones here ethereum classic awesome i love ethereum classic i love charles hodgkinskin i'm not sure if i said that right but y'all know who he is if not you don't need to catch up do a quick google the goog yep Riding up this line. You know, it's above pretty much everything that I like to see. It's showing a little bit of negative uh, sideways divergence here, though. Which isn't terrible until it breaks back below 50, which it's, oh my goodness, it's right on there. It's right on there, guys. Look at that. It's okay. Keep an eye on it. I'm not in ETC really kicking my butt for not putting some hypothetical money in there. It's all good. Can't get them all. See anything else up here? Self key. I don't know a lot about self key, but it has been on top of the Binance list for a hot minute. You can see it looks like it just got listed on there late June. Had an insane run up, 8x or so, sold off. About 70% roughly. Still early, kind of hard to do anything with that. Just food for thought, self key. I guess let's see what kind of the general idea is of self key. So I don't know anything about it. Maybe uh, y'all want to know a little bit about it to intrigue you to go check it out. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever pulled this website up. Your key to freedom, empowering individuals and organizations to find more freedom and privacy through full ownership of their digital identity. Yeah, I've never heard that before. It's new. It's revolutionary. It's, it's going to change the entire way you think about crypto, I'm sure. Yep, that's pretty much all I want to look at. Don't really care beyond that. Website wasn't that cool. I just mostly trade price action, guys. I like some of the top coins. But I kind of think those ones have maybe already made their, or what do you, how would you say, they've already built their foundation pretty well. There's already a good 10 or so out there. All right. Let's go into just regular Bitcoin here. Screw all these other little coins. Do that all day. So here we go. Here's regular Bitcoin on the four hour. 
Let's just look at price and some MAs. So yeah, that's a 200, the pink one here. 50 red, blue's my custom one. And this is a trend line that actually I thought we removed last video because it has clearly broken it. So let's just get rid of that, it is irrelevant. So now we just keep bouncing off of the trend lines here, the 50 in, in mine. We are over the 200 now on the four hour, which has not happened since, again, April. April 10th, guys, that big, or April 11th, that big candle, that $1,000 candle it was, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, more than a $1,000 candle. That was pretty beast mode. I remember that day I was watching it. That was a 20, 18 and a half percent move, about $1,300. Pretty substantial. Then it continued to have a pretty nice run off the bottom of that, ultimately, to about 50% looks like. Uh, a little like high 40s, 47 over 23 days. So that's pretty good. I guess, you know, fractals are cool. A lot of people like fractals. I enjoy a fractal myself from time to time. So if we look at that, say we go 21 days out from this candle, not as big, but still comparable. Although it didn't get up to the top until uh, recently now, but we'll just count that. So 21 days, 47%, let's call it 46.9. Is that close enough? Would be. We're about halfway through, as you can see right here. And that's that's a little early because this one had really passed it. So, you know, we could fractals and time, though. You got to kind of be a little flexible. This is TA. It is an art, right? So in the same kind of context, don't forget that, by the way. 22 days, you know, we're looking at somewhere at the end of July. It's interesting. So fractal food for thought. Or food fractal. Almost could be like a segment itself. Food fractals. Fractal foods? I don't know. Probably not. Probably just trying to force it. But here we go. Interesting. Price is 6666.3 at the current time, which is 822 p.m. for myself. Let's put that on a full screen. Give us that extra real estate. We always like that. And we can get double extra. Bam. Let's see if we get any divergences here. Volatility is super low. That's what this top one is right here. So no bears really. Sometimes you got to be careful because that's when they start coming out, as you can see in this zone here. Uh, and if you can't see that and you're just listening, it's from... May 29th, when we kind of had this same semi same pattern, not near as strong, and had that quiet run to the to what is this six June 9th, and then all of a sudden, hello, bears showed their head. So that's sometimes you got to watch out. It's like a stale green light, you know. You know it's about to change red. Doesn't mean it's going to go down. In this analogy, could go up too. But so we're kind of at the same point here, but we are above the 200 day and the 50. Did that just cross it? Oh, let's take a, let's look at price here and zoom in, custom that up. That officially did just cross it guys right here, just barely on this last candle. So about a little less than an hour and a half ago, we have a cross. on the 50 and the 200, on the four hour, mind you. All right, so guys, I think this is a pretty good spot here. We're even breaking out of the cloud on the four hour. Four hour is kind of like my favorite base to see what, and then I'll go from there, sort of. Uh, let's pull it out on the daily. On the daily though, see how much it changes. Four hour, you're like, ooh, I like this. I kind of want to get long here maybe not financial advice and never will be. I don't even know what that means. 
I'm just out here ranting and you're just listening to what I'm ranting on my opinion. It's cool. So here we go. It's just chilling right above the cloud in the four hour. You're like, man, this looks great. We're getting over that. It's been since April, but then you pull it out on the daily and it's like, Ooh, crap. We're not even in the cloud. We're bouncing almost right off of my modified moving average. Exactly. Bet, which is close to the 52. Uh, yeah, that's, it's not as cool guys. Cause if you go back to April, I guess it's similar to then it actually didn't really get above my moving average or the 50 until we cleared 8,800. And that was on 420. So about a little over a week later, then we still had a nice little run up and then a quick sell off. So we're not clear yet. It's to be clear. We're not in the clear. Let's wait and see if this can pop up above here. That would be great. I would love to see that right here, guys. Which is at about the 6,600 level. If we can just keep going sideways a little bit longer, I do think that there is likely a pop to, let's see what the 618 measurement is on this. What is that? About 8,400 roughly, about right here which is funny, it coincides with the crossover on the cloud, bam. So let's just put a little uh, line there. If we can get above that, that would be good. That's kind of the target. And yeah, if guys, if we start stalling at all more here, right, we need to get this momentum going. We're battling here on the DMIs. There is a very neutral. Very neutral on the RSI. On the daily, the, it's more bearish to me because of this action here coming up, banging below the 50 in my moving average in the cloud. Anything can happen. I'm always long a little bit of hypothetical money in the markets. So I'm a paper trader only, guys. That's all I do, just paper trade. Only paper trading, for sure. All right, let's look at ETH, and then we'll wrap this up. Ethereum. Actually, let's go backwards. I'm going to take advice from one of my friends. And let's look at a couple more time frames on Bitcoin before we move on. Quickly on the daily. No divergences except for the ones we already saw here. There. And here from this guy. So you can see that. It's pretty clear. It's even on the DMI. So there's definitely a divergence there. So this is a nice base. Let's check it out on the uh, weekly. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. That was too much for you. It's too much for everybody. Let me go ahead and knock that visibility off on the days. This is my buy box in the last video that I talked about that I've drawn on there a long time ago. I'm going to just shade it out. I'm not going to move it because I want it to be there. I'm going to keep it there. All right. Oh, super rookie. Super rookie buy box. That's what we need right here. It's going to be real good if we can get into that zone, guys, because everyone will be freaking out. But let's not talk about that right now. So, actually, if I can do the visibility on the day. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Boom. So, forget about it. I'll click it back on later. So, yeah, we're coming up. Clear resistance here on the three-day. Still not out of the uh, woodworks yet on RSI or DMI it's above the 25 guys that means the bears or the bulls if the green line is above that that means they are dominant at the moment I'll do a video here in the near future just on ADX DMI and how I use it uh, I think it's really underrated a lot of people don't use it I don't hear about it very much you mostly hear MACDs RSI's moving averages of some sort, 
the cloud more so now than before volume indicators, basic ones. I love volume. Volume's important. Not as important as price. Price is king. Price is king. Price is king. All right, weekly. Let's jump it up. Dang, guys, I'm sorry. Got too many things on here. You know what? We're not going to weekly. I'm going to adjust that in my next video. Get a couple of charts just for doing this without all my crazy notes. Unless y'all would like to see all those. Maybe sometimes we can do a crazy day during the week. Because, Like I said, I want to try to do this daily. That is my goal over the next two weeks. By the end of the next two weeks to have that going. All right, let's go to Ethereum. Bouncing right off this trend line that we've had since May 30th, late, late May. And the first touch on it was mid-July, second touch. And this is back May of 2017, by the way. And then a touch in July 2017, and then a touch in September, mid-September 2017. And then didn't touch it at all, obviously, because it ran up hard and everything else did. And then it came back to touch it April 2018, right before we had that nice big bounce. And here we do, here we are, sitting at a trend line cross, which is in two major trend lines cross. Those are actually important numbers. Generally speaking, of course, nothing is set in stone. And uh, you got it right there, kind of trying to break out of this guy. I wouldn't call that confirmed yet. We still need a few more days for that three day to close out. But interesting inflection point, guys. Get ready for a large move around the corner. I want to say it's to the upside, limited to the upside. Maybe Ethereum to 550, 600, Bitcoin to seven, mid sevens. That would give good energy too for downside if we were going to do that. I think we're just a little overdue for some downward action or upward action in this bear market. But anything can happen. Let price guide you. Don't make too many assumptions. Let's down, chop it down to the hour, see if we see any kind of divergences. No, I don't really see any. Not for recent price action. The one hour has broke down to the 200 hour moving average. I don't really use those. My main time frame that I go is at four hour. It's like the smallest. That's me personally. You can do whatever you like, of course. It just gets kind of noisy for me when you can see how noisy, even the indicators start getting super noisy. But it's good to, like if you see a divergence, like for example, let's go back here like before this little pop happened. You can see right here, sell off, retracement, sell off sideways from staying all inside of this big candle, this reversal candle right here. Stay all like ranging all in that bar. And look at this divergence, boom, 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 continued, 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 even in, Broke the range slightly in late June, but divergence still holding up. You're seeing higher highs. I'm sorry, higher lows on the ADX and the RSI. So that was something I thought was interesting. So when I saw that, sometimes I will go down to the hour and just be like, is that really happening? Is that really, really happening? Because sometimes you can't see those like sharp cuts. So you go into the hour, you're like, oh, low. And then you can really see it on the hour. I mean, look at this, guys. Right here. I can even make this a little bit bigger. Right here. Boom. Little fake out on the hour. It did not fake the four hour out. That's why you got to watch. That's why you got to watch that because those low time frames, they are sneaky, sneaky, very sneaky. I think you underestimate my sneakiness, sir. So good old Adam Sandler action there. If you get, weren't familiar, I won't give it all away. You'll have to figure it out from there. Ethereum, 
looks about the same as Bitcoin. We're at this inflection point, guys, on top of the clouds. I bet you Litecoin is there too. I'm going to pull it up real fast. I'm going to wrap up. We're done after that. Litecoin. Uh, Litecoin looks worse, actually. So put my foot in my mouth there. Litecoin. Not as pretty. Litecoin's kind of ugly chart right now. It is definitely the most bearish. Good pair, pairs trade could possibly be uh, that I might entertain is long the light, short the Bitcoin. Or Ethereum, you wouldn't have, the ratio would be easier to do with Ethereum and Litecoin. You wouldn't have to do as many Litecoin. Be available to smaller players. Although there is leverage, again, no financial advice here. Just my thoughts. All right, so I think we're gonna wrap this up. Let me know, guys, if y'all listen to this, if you liked the different kind of semi format. Of course, this is still a work in order, but I am trying to move towards having a little bit better structure. Oh, one, one last thing I did want to do and add to this. I should have already did this is just regular equities. I call them regular, like, oh, no one cares about those. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right, let's look at the ES. It's on fire. Of course it is. Of course, when I don't put any hypothetical money into it, when it's banging on this trend line right here for like the third time. Yeah, you know, it's okay. I don't have any hypothetical hypothetical gains or losses. So that's awesome, right? So ES is looking real strong. U.S. markets are looking good. I am going to add more once I can try to consolidate the time and not rant too much about each coin or tradable that I'm looking at. So I can touch a lot of bases, crystallize it for you, get a lot of info jam-packed. Yeah, we're looking like we want to kind of break out here. Interestingly enough, the equities, futures, you know, NASDAQs and stuff like that, they look kind of where Bitcoin is. They're in similar positions like, oh, man, right at inflection points. Where are we breaking down from trying to break out like this? Look at NASDAQ. Or are we about to just roll over from here? I don't know. Wouldn't it be beautiful if they just went up together? Just moon together that is something i believe that is very probable i can go into that and do another video just about that topic alone all right let's check out gold real quick gold is recovering slightly from a very nasty sell-off it was floating around 1300 for a while and then just got monkey slapped 50 60 bucks in mid June to uh, late June, showing a little bit of resilience. It's up a couple percent from the sell off from late June. Trying to show some uh, strength. I hope it does. I always like the metals. Although I do think crypto is going to give them a run for their money. Let's check out uh, silver. Silver, boom. Still inside this box range I have for silver for a long time. Let's go weekly so you can see how long that is. Goes all the way back to 07. Of course, we have this sell off. That is one thing that concerns me when we do get these sell offs. Everything becomes correlated to the downside. Doesn't matter what you have. Bitcoin, even. I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're probably going to never subscribe now or unsubscribe. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't even have any of those. So silver is looking good. Love silver more than gold. It's used in more things. It's like 40% of it, I believe, is used in industrial capacity when it's mined to where it's not recoverable. So, you know, gold's not like that. They're different. I like them both. Prefer silver. Here's one that's fun 
just for your food for thought, a lot of people don't look at this probably in the crypto space. Maybe they do. Y'all tell me. Let's go to silver gold ratio or excuse me. Oh, nope, that's not the right one. So you know what? Let's not do that. We'll do that next time. How about that? All right. So it is it really high in levels that usually is not, by the way. That'll be a little teaser. It's giving a good signal, in my opinion. And let's check out some oil. I know a lot of people in crypto definitely don't care about oil, but I do. I trade oil. Hypothetically, I trade it all the time with my paper account. You know, that's just what I do. You know how I roll. Paper trading, baby. Yeah, oil's looking strong. Consolidating after this big run up. We'll see what happens though. Keeping my eye on it. It's in a real tight range, a little two dollar range. All right, guys. I don't wanna this is already getting a little longer than I wanted it to. That's okay. I'm learning every time I do one of these and even do practice ones. So keep listening, I hope. Click the subscribe. Here it is. I have a little thing on the YouTube where I'm uploading things now. I'm still building all that out. Bear with me. My friends are listening to this and want to help me on some of that part. I would gladly accept. And all right, guys. Y'all take care, and I will chat with you on the next one, hopefully tomorrow. Peace.